Let's talk about iPad mini. The iPad mini is over two years old. I actually did the initial review for Apple Insider and there's so many things to like about it. It's thin and light. It's great for ebook reading. And I even edit podcasts on the iPad mini and actually enjoy it. The smaller screen size doesn't bother me and being so thin and light, it's great to just take it around and I'll edit podcasts on the patio or even in the car if I'm waiting on my kids for something. It's a great device for so many things, but it's also kind of long in the tooth. And now that it's my only iPad, yes, this is the only iPad I'm using right now. I definitely noticed some things that need to be updated, hopefully next year. First off, I was rocking the dual iPad lifestyle with a 12.9 inch iPad Pro and the iPad mini. And honestly, with that amazing XDR screen on the iPad Pro, I was using the mini less and less. But recently, one of our iPad Pros took a drop. You can see the sleep slash power button right here is kind of pressed in and we can't get it out. It did take a direct hit on that button, but I brought it to the Apple store and they said it is unrepairable and Apple Care expired a few months before, so they say it's a $750 replacement. Now, Apple did not update any iPads in 2023, and so there are definitely upgraded models coming next year, so I don't wanna spend $750 to replace this M1 model iPad, and buying a new one or refurbished, especially with a 512 SSD or even one terabyte, gets pretty expensive. So I gave my M2 iPad Pro to my wife to have for right now, and I'm all in on iPad mini. By the way, if you know a third party repair place how to work on an iPad Pro and maybe fix this button, I think that's all that's wrong with it. I'd love to hear about it. Every time I plug this into my Mac, I'll do a restore to factory settings, but it just gets into a boot loop. And I think this is being held, constantly putting it in that restart mode. So now that this is the only iPad that I'm using right now, let's talk about the good things first. Number one, again, you cannot beat the thinness and lightness of this iPad. And I wasn't doing Final Cut Pro or Logic Pro 10 on my iPad. I was just doing podcast editing. I used the Ferrite app for that. And honestly, it works great. Typically, I'm just dealing with two or three tracks. It works great with the Apple Pencil Generation 2. I can move stuff around and edit, no problem. Podcast editing, thumbs up. And while I typically gravitate to physical books, using the Apple Books app on the iPad mini is just such a great reading experience. Now, if you're in the harshest sunlight conditions, like at the beach, it might be difficult to read, but I find it great even outside of my patio. Love reading on it. And if you saved some articles to read later or you're just browsing the internet, maybe shopping on Amazon, iPad mini, perfect device for all of that. But having been in the iPad Pro XDR promotion for so long, there are some parts of the iPad mini that just get a little irritating. Number one, ever since the iPad mini launched, the display is just a little awkward. It's like iPad OS was made for every other iPad size, but this one. The weather widget that I use right here on the home screen, some of the icons still overlap, even with several iOS updates after this iPad launched. And while it may not be a huge deal, going from app to app quickly or just trying to navigate quickly if you haven't opened an app in a while, you definitely notice a little bit of lag and the display is just not as good as the ProMotion on iPad Pro. I know some people don't notice ProMotion or see the difference, but when it comes to switching apps and just scrolling up and down a web page, I just see the lack of ProMotion and I don't like it. And from a more practical use case, when I'm editing podcasts, I'm typically scrubbing back and forth pretty quickly while I'm editing. And you just notice the screen and display is just not quite as responsive as an iPad Pro. So if we get a new iPad mini next year, I'm hoping that the screen gets ProMotion. I don't think it will, but I'm hopefully it gets ProMotion. And I would absolutely love an XDR display. I know that's even less likely to get on an iPad mini, but I would love it. Secondly, the iPad mini still has Touch ID, no Face ID. Most of the time it's okay. You know, it takes a second to respond. I don't think it's as fast as Face ID. That time it worked pretty good. But if your finger's off a little bit, Touch ID might not activate quickly. You have to make sure it's right on top of that button. We have Face ID in all the iPhones now, so it's definitely not a size issue. I understand it might be a cost, but even now, two years later, the iPad mini starts at $500 for 64 gigabyte SSD. So I think if we get an updated iPad mini, we can fit Face ID in there. Come on. And lastly on the negatives, the battery on the iPad mini is noticeably not as good. If I haven't picked up my iPad mini or charged it in a while, Usually when I turn it on, this is what the battery looks like, if it turns on at all. I don't know if it's because of the older processor or just the device is two plus years old, but it just doesn't seem to hold a charge when it's just asleep or on standby. My iPad Pro, even my M1 iPad Pro, which is almost two years old now, it just has better standby life. Even if I haven't charged it in days or turned it on, there'll still be enough battery to get something done that I need to get done iPad mini, you do have to charge it on a regular basis or at least the night before if you're gonna do some work on it. Now, one other use case that I love for the iPad is digital sheet music. I'm actually a trumpet player and singer and I have lots of sheet music that I like to play even if it's just for fun. And a smaller screen like this, while you can see the notes and the retina display makes it pretty clear, 
playing on something like the iPad mini is just not as nice as the larger 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now I do give Apple credit for getting this iPad USB-C when it launched two years ago, and that USB-C port is actually pretty powerful. For instance, if I wanted to record a podcast here with my iPad mini, I can actually do that. I can plug in a USB-C microphone like this Audio-Technica ATR2100X, and you'll see it's already getting signal right here in the iPad, and I can record locally to the Ferrite app, or I can use the Riverside app to record with remote guests and make a podcast that way. And while the display is not much bigger than my iPhone 15 Pro Max, it can actually still work with apps like Orion and be a display for external devices. Here I have a USB-C to HDMI capture device, and you can use this with a Nintendo Switch or Mac Mini or anything else, and the iPad Mini can still be that external display. And iPad Mini still works with Universal Control and Sidecar if you want to use it as an external display, or just dragging files, which I do when I record a podcast. I can drag an audio file from my Mac Studio all the way to the right-hand side of the screen. It pops over onto my iPad Mini, let go of the mouse, and that audio file is now going to import right there. Universal control makes it super easy. There are just so many reasons to love this iPad. It's so small and light. I can still edit podcasts on it. Great for reading and web browsing or reading internet articles. There's just a few things, namely the battery life, some weird display issues, and my desire for ProMotion and Face ID that would make this iPad almost perfect. I know we're not gonna get all of that, especially an XDR display, but just Face ID and ProMotion, faster refresh rate, and this would be just an amazing iPad. I would love to use it all the time. And it remains to be seen what processor Apple will put in an updated iPad mini. iPad mini has been on the A series of chips, while iPad Air and iPad Pro have been on the M series. That also distinguishes a couple factors. Stage Manager is a big feature, some people love it, that's only available on M series processors. And you can only run Final Cut and Logic Pro 10 on M series. Although, I can't imagine editing in Final Cut on an iPad mini, some people might want to use Stage Manager, or connect their iPad mini to an external display to do some of those other tasks. And while it would be great if an updated iPad mini got an M3 processor, it probably won't get the latest and greatest. But even an M2 or even an M1, which would still allow for Final Cut Stage Manager and Logic Pro 10, would be a great upgrade. So here's my request, Apple. If you're watching, please update the iPad mini next year. Let's not forget about it. Don't let it drop off the lineup. I know it's secluded to a corner of the Apple Store that no one's looking at or browsing next to, but this is a great iPad, I know beloved by many, and I'm using it now, it's my only iPad, I use it to edit podcasts every week, it's just a great device. But let me know in the comments, what features would make the iPad mini number one in your mind for years to come? And I know it's very small, but a Magic Keyboard style accessory with an iPad mini, that'd be pretty cool too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button before you go. I actually have an entire video on why I dropped the Magic Keyboard and went to the Keyboard Folio, you can check out that video right here, and if you want to get into shortcuts, I actually have a Shortcuts 101 video. It's doing really well right now. You can check it out up here. But I go through seven easy to build shortcuts, how to do it step by step, or you could just download the shortcuts from the links in the video description. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video.